Okay, today we're going to talk about the area of polygons. And by the end of this lesson, you should be able to say, I can put together and take apart shapes to help me find the area of polygons. And we're going to use this information later on to find the area of shapes that do not have formulas that are very easy to use. Let's review the area of a formula, the area formula for a rectangle first. If you'll recall, the area formula is base times height. So if I have a base of six inches and a height of four inches, I simply need to substitute my base and height into the formula and get six times four, which is 24 inches squared. And we always use, we always uh, use our unit right squared in our units for the area for area because we are actually counting how many squares fit in a particular space. So how does this relate to the formula for the area of a square? Well, if you'll recall, a square is a special kind of rectangle where all four sides are congruent. So if I wanted to use base times height, since it is a special rectangle, I could. And substitute my base of four, my height of four, and get 16 centimeters squared. But let's look at what we just wrote. Both of the sides are the exact same. So I can use my knowledge of exponents to rewrite this problem as four squared, which still gives me 16 centimeters squared. So the formula for the area of a square is similar to the formula for the area of a rectangle. It is side times side. Now I don't need two different variables, b and h, because both of my sides are the same. So I can say side times side, s times s, or s squared. Now write and label this formula in your summary in a different color or highlight or circle this formula. Now let's use what we know about the area formula for a rectangle to find the area of a parallelogram. This parallelogram is going to have a couple different dimensions. It's going to have a base of 8 feet, a side length of 3 feet, and a height of 2 feet. Now, the height is important because it's telling me how tall this parallelogram is. And whenever I'm using the height in a formula, I want to know how the, the measurement from the ground to its highest point. Now this parallelogram does not look very easy to find the area of, but it actually is. We're going to do some cutting and pasting. Let's cut this, the right triangle off of this parallelogram. So now I've got two right angles here. I'm going to take this triangle, remember this is 8 feet, and my height is 2 feet. And I'm going to move this triangle over to the left side. And now I've created a rectangle with a base of 6 feet and a height of 2 feet. So if I use the formula base times height, or 8 times 2, I get a total area of 16 feet squared. So the formula for the area of a parallelogram is the same as the formula for a rectangle, base times height. Now in your notes, write and label this formula in a different color, or highlighted, or circled. Now let's use what we know about the area formula of a rectangle, base times height, to find the area of a triangle. Now this rectangle is going to have a base of 10 inches and a height of 4 inches. If I took this rectangle and cut it in half along its diagonal, I have created two congruent rec or triangles. 
the total area of this rectangle was base times height, or 10 times 4. But if I want to find the triangle, I have to take that total area and divide it by 2, because I've cut this rectangle in half to create the triangle. So I, if I substitute my values, base of 10 times height of 4, and then divide it by 2, I will get the area of this triangle. 10 times 4 is 40. Divided by 2 is 20. So 20 inches squared is the area of this triangle. I can write this formula in a different way. I could write base times height divided by 2 and use substitute 10 times 4 divided by 2 and use the order of operations to help me solve. 10 times 4 is 40 divided by 2. I still get 20 inches squared. There is still one more way I can write this formula. I can take half of the base times the height, which is 4. Half of 10 is 5, times 4 is 20 inches squared. So a triangle is half of a rectangle, therefore the formula for a triangle is 1 half base times height, or base times height divided by 2, or written differently, base times height divided by 2. And it doesn't matter which formula you choose to use because all three will give you the same area. Now, in a different color, write and label this formula in your summary. Or you can highlight or circle this formula in your summary. You may be asking yourself, does this work for all triangles? Well, let's take a parallelogram and cut that in half. This parallelogram has a base of 6 inches and a height of 2 inches, which means this triangle has a height from base to its highest point of 2 inches as well and a base of 6 inches. So if I use the formula base times height divided by 2 and substitute my values, base of 6, height of 2, and use the order of operations, 6 times 2 is 12, divided by 2 gives me 6 inches squared, or base times height over 2, which is 6 times 2 over 2, 6 times 2 is 12, divided by 2 gives me 6 inches squared. Or my third formula, 1 half uh, base times height, or 1 half times 6 times 2, which gives me 3 times 2, or 6 inches squared. So this formula, 1 half base times height, or base times height over 2, or base times height divided by 2, this formula for the area of a triangle will work for all triangles. Because a triangle is half of a rectangle, or half of a parallelogram, and both of their formulas are base times height. For the last figure we're going to talk about, let's use what we know about the area formula of a rectangle to find the area of a trapezoid. Now this trapezoid is going to have a couple, this is an isosceles trapezoid because both sides are going to be congruent. So these sides are going to be 4 inches. But it has two different bases, so which one do we use? The bottom base is 10 inches, and the top base is 6 inches. The height of this trapezoid, so from bottom to top, 
is going to stand three inches tall. But still this doesn't look like a, <clears throat> this still doesn't look like a uh, figure that I can easily find the area of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this trapezoid and I'm going to copy it. So I'm going to create the same exact trapezoid and place it upside down and next to the, my original trapezoid. So now I have a base of 10 inches on the top, 6 inches on the bottom, my sides are still 4 inches, and my height is still 3 inches. But now I've got this parallelogram that is really big. To find the base of this parallelogram, I need to add these two pieces here. So I can take 6 plus 10, which is 16, as my base, times my height, which is 3. which will give me a total area of this figure of 48 inches squared. But I don't want this whole figure. I just want to know the area of this piece. Well, when I copied this trapezoid and put another one right next to it, I've actually doubled my height. So I've taken my two bases and added them. I've multiplied them by the height which is four, or which is three inches. But now, since I have two trapezoids and I only want the area of one, I need to divide this by two to get 24 inches squared as my area. Let's look at some formulas that we can use. We can use the formula for the area of a parallelogram to help us create the formula of a trapezoid. Because I first need to find my base 10 plus 6, because I've doubled, or because I've doubled the area here, and my bases are now longer, 10 plus 6. I multiplied it by my height of 3, and then I divided it by 2. Another option would be to take half of my base times height. So if I took 1 half base 1, which is down here, plus base 2, which is the second base up here. And then multiplied it by my height, which is 3 inches. So half of 10 plus 6, if I'm using the order of operations, 10 plus 6 is 16. Half of 16 is 8 times my height. 24 inches squared. So either one of these formulas will work. In your notes or in your summaries, in a different color or highlighted or circled, write and label this formula. Now it's time to practice. On the next slide, you are going to get six figures. On these figures, you need to name them or classify them, then find the area and the perimeter. And remember, perimeter is adding all sides. Don't forget to WSQ in your notes. Now identify and calculate the area and perimeter for each polygon. Each of these problems need three answers. The name of the shape, the area, and the perimeter. You can go back and watch any portion of this video as many times as you need to. And you may use calculators.